the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Good morning, Mr. Beauregard. Colonel Beauregard, sir. This I remind you repeatedly, Dr. Kildare, I have the honor to be a full colonel of the Virginia Volunteers. I'm sorry, Colonel. I forgot about it. How do you feel? Well, sir, if I wasn't feeling mighty bad, I wouldn't be here. I came here from Richmond two weeks ago, paralyzed from the waist down, and I am now also paralyzed in my left arm. And nothing has been done for me. We can't treat the paralysis until we've diagnosed the cause of it. It is arthritis, sir. I informed you of that the first day I came here. There's positively no evidence we can find of any arthritic changes. Now, you look here, young man. I came up north to get one of those newfangled arthritis shots I've heard about, and I'm going to have one, even if I have to take legal action against this institution. Do you hear me? Yes, I imagine the whole seventh floor can hear you. Right. Well, I'll drop in again later in the day. Here now, don't you go running out on me. I'm a doctor, Colonel Beauregard. Legal matters come under another department. Good day. Dr. Kildare, I could hear Papa shout and clear down the hall. He, he's not any worse, is he? No, your father's about the same, Amy Lou. He's a little upset, that's all. Well, I'd better go on in and talk to him. Seems like he just can't feel content unless I'm standing right there at his side. Yes, I've noticed he depends on you a lot. Dr. Kildare... You're not holding something back, are you? I mean, it's not real bad, and you just won't tell us about it. No, Amy Lou. Dr. Gillespie and I have checked every possibility we can think of. We still don't know what's causing this paralysis of your father's. I wish to heaven we did. Jimmy, you can go through those books until you're blue in the face, but you are not going to find any rare disease that explains this Beauregard case. I wasn't looking for a disease, Dr. Gillespie. I was uh, thinking more of a syndrome. Syndrome, huh? A group of concurrent related symptoms without a known cause. Uh, you're reaching for straws. Maybe. What's your idea? Well, the colonel is afflicted with the progressive atrophy of neural function, possibly degenerative in nature, and... You're uh, stalling. All you've said is that the patient is paralyzed. We've known that for two weeks. All right, you mean... All right, all right. Then I'll venture a tentative diagnosis. Now, I'm interested. Shoot. There's no uh, physiological cause at all. The trouble is uh, psychoneurotic, hysterical paralysis. Ah. I'm afraid I can't buy that. Why not? He's the hysterical type, isn't he? Yes, but no, it won't hold water. Do you have a better idea? Sure. A hereditary syndrome called familial periodic paralysis. Ah, <laughs> ridiculous. That's textbook curiosity. I've never had a case of it in 35 years of diagnosis. You've got one now. Ah, go on. Mind if I take another blood sample and run it for a potassium deficiency? No, go ahead. Waste your time if you want to. All right, let's see. I'll need a centrifuge and a flame photometer. Hmm. Guess I'd better set up one of the labs. Yeah. And when you get this out of your system, Jimmy, we better plan the kind of psychiatric treatment we're going to use. Well, maybe it won't be necessary. See you later. Hmm. Familial periodic paralysis. 
Confounded tarnation. Now, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Dr. Kildare, since I came up to this northern hospital, I've been punctured by needles in 47 different places. Another week and I won't even have any blood left. Easy now, Colonel. <clears throat> there we are. Uh, well, that's a full quart, sir. You've drawn out a full quart there. Oh, it's only 20 cc's, and this may be the last sample we'll have to take. Well, it's the last one you're going to get, sir. Of course, if this doesn't separate properly, I'll, I'll have to run a second specimen. I won't hear of it, sir. We Beauregards have always stood ready to shed our last drop of blood for the honor of the South, sir. But I must say my feelings toward Blair Hospital are not quite so generous. Dr. Kildare, no more blood, sir. Dr. Kildare, I surely hope you don't mind me hanging around peering over your shoulder like this. Not in the least, Amy Lou. You're as much concerned about this as I am. Now, let's get this... Sample out of the centrifuge. At least the vial didn't break. Oh, I'm glad. Pop would have a conniption fit if you tried to take another specimen. Mm. Good, clean separation, too. Well, we'll load it in the atomizer and see what we've got. Dr. Kildare, I guess maybe I talk sometimes like I got magnolia blossoms where my brains ought to be. No, you talk like a girl who's devoted to her father and who's pretty worried about his condition right now. Well, I, I've always kind of looked after him since Mama died. Let me get this burner lit. There we are. Dr. Kildare, I guess I got even more than you know to worry about. You see, I've never had the nerve to tell Papa what I did about six months ago. Uh, well, what'd you do? I got married. Hmm. Congratulations. Well, Papa'd be mad in a wet hen if he knew. He'd never even let me go out with boys. <laughs> what did you marry? A horse? No, a boy. I met him secretly, you see. He was on the newspaper in Richmond at the time, but now he's working for a magazine here in New York, and he wants us to get an apartment and, and well, live together. He's getting mighty impatient. Yes, I imagine. I guess you can see I've got something to worry about, all right. Well, let me know if I'm wrong on this diagnosis. We'll both have something to worry about. Now, let's start the test. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. All right, all right. But the only thing certain from these results is the fact the patient has a potassium deficiency. And that can happen from other causes. Name one, Dr. Gillespie. Well, um, uh, uh, amoebic dysentery, for one. Oh, now, is that your diagnosis in the Beauregard no, case? No, 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 no. I didn't say that. I was merely giving you one example also been doing some research on the subject. Confound it, I'm responsible for you. If you're going to put yourself out on a limb, I got to know something about the structure of the tree. Well, just three or four doses of KCL solution ought to settle the question. Yeah, make the colonel a pretty sick man if he doesn't have a tolerance for it. Don't worry, he will. Uh, Confound it, Jimmy. I still think it's psychoneurotic. Oh, dear. There you are. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Caro, Caro, lower your flaps and come in for a landing. Dr. Gillespie, do you know what happened? No, what? Uh, that patient, that, 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 Mr. Beauregard in 720. It's Colonel Beauregard, sir. Well, whatever he is, he's going to sue Blair Hospital. Good. Dr. Gillespie, please. I mean it, Caro. I'm tired of watching that lawyer of yours sit back on his big, fat, retaining fee without doing any work for it. Do him good to fight a case once in a while. This is hardly a matter of a personal whimsy. Uh, Why, you've no idea how incensed this man is. You think not? Why, most of the things he said to me, I simply wouldn't sully myself by repeating. Well, that bad. Huh? Gentlemen, this crisis must be met. Colonel Beauregard's case must be diagnosed without further delay. Well, fortunately, Dr. Carew, we've just done this. Our sacred honor demands that we... What did you say? I said we've diagnosed the case and we're ready to start treatment. Killed there. Yeah. Then there's nothing to worry about us. No, 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 no. Not a thing in the world. Dr. Gillespie, what is the diagnosis? Well, it's a matter of, uh, that is, uh, Dr. Kildare made certain tests which seem to indicate that, uh, well, confounded, we've decided the colonel is afflicted with familial periodic paralysis. Thank you, doctor. Can you imagine that? Only with great difficulty. 
We should have definite results within a couple of days, Dr. Carew. Excellent. Oh, dear me. I must run up and tell the legal department. Mm. They'll be so happy about this. Yes, undoubtedly. Well, gentlemen, as they say in England, carry on. Yes. Uh, Jimmy, about that limb you got yourself out on. Yes, Doctor. Move over, will you? It's nothing but salt water, Dr. Kildare. You've had me drinking that concoction for two days now, and I'll not imbibe any more of it. In Richmond, sir, we do not drink salt water. Now, Papa, don't you go getting obstreperous again. Oh, maybe you won't have to drink any more of it, Colonel. If we're right, you've had enough now for a cure. A cure, sir? Well, may I point out to you, sir, that I am still flat on my back in this bed, paralyzed? How do you know whether you're paralyzed until you try to get up and walk? Dr. Gillespie, I'll not stand for any bullying, sir. Oh, fiddle faddle. Lammy Lou, throw those bedclothes back out of the way. Yes, sir. Here. Better put this robe around you, Colonel. It'll be a bad time to catch cold. You're merely wasting your time. <laughs> so Oh, Now, well. go ahead. See if you can bend your knees and draw your feet up. Well, of course I can but I need an arthritis shot. Oh, please try, Papa. You just got to try. Maybe, Lou, I am trying, but I... Look, I... they're moving, Papa. You're moving your legs. By the great horn spoon. The milieu periodic, Doctor? Uh, uh... Then let's try standing up, Colonel. Well, I... I doubt if I can, sir. I can barely move them. I, I still think an arthritis shot is what I... Feet on the floor. That's it. Now, hold on to my arm. Try to stand. Easy now. Well, I... I don't think I can... Oh, Papa. Well, well, by Jefferson Davis. You're standing up. Yeah. Colonel, a few days massage of those muscles and you'll be as good as new. Well, I, I'd never have believed it, sir. And from salt water. Oh, Papa. I'm so happy and it, it's all so wonderful. Sure. Yeah, don't carry on, Emmy Lou. Oh, but it is. You're going to be all right. And I'm so happy. And, and now I can leave home and go live with Richard. Uh, uh. What did you say, Emmy Lou? I'm married. I've been married for six months, and I've been scared to tell you about it. Emmy Lou? His name's Richard, and he's wonderful. And we're going to live right here in New York, and you can come see us every... Uh, Papa! uh, Catch him, Jimmy. Easy now, Colonel. uh, There. uh, My legs. Uh, My legs, sir. I can't move them. Oh, it's all right. Here, let's get back into bed. Uh, There you are. They're paralyzed, sir. Just like they were before. Oh, Papa. Emmy Lou, uh, uh, we'll be outside. Well, it, it looks as if that's that. <laughs> Familiar, huh, Jimmy? <laughs> All right, Dr. Gillespie, the limb broke. I'll come down to your office in a half hour. Guess we'd better plan some kind of hmm, psychiatric treatment. Uh. <laughs> Turn to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. concentration of potassium in his blood is essentially normal now. And yet the patient is still paralyzed. (laughs) Amazing, Dr. Kildare. All right, but it was the right answer. He was cured. Uh, 
Trouble now is an entirely different cause. And might I inquire as to the nature of that cause? Yeah. Psychoneurotic. Hysterical paralysis, to quote an old medical friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, Colonel Beauregard is an abnormally possessive father. Mm. Knowledge that his daughter was married and was planning to leave him was quite a shock. Though his mind had an one sure way of holding her. Mm. A way in which he was already conditioned. Paralysis. Well, that's quite a coincidence, though, Jimmy. Patient paralyzed twice in the same day from two different causes. Now, you're just trying to start an argument. Oh. That's the only logical explanation of his trouble, and you know it as well as I do. Yes, yeah, sure, but still it's a coincidence. We'll have a hard time convincing anybody else of it. Yeah, especially Garou. Ah, that nincompoop. He's got a chronic paralysis himself from the neck up. It's too bad. Just when he had the legal department all quieted down. <laughs> Uh, pardon me, Dad. What is it, Parker? Well, well Dr. Carew is out here. Shall I? Yes, 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 yes. Send him in. Confound it, Jimmy. I got to learn to stop speaking of the devil. No, 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 no. What's all this about the devil? We've just decided Colonel Beauregard's possessed of a devil. Really? Is there anything to be... Oh, you're twitting me. Uh, Besides, a little bird told me that you had the colonel up and walking. Uh, what a precocious little bird. In fact, I'm just on my way now to see the miracle for myself, as you might put it. Yes, well, why don't you put it that way? And I'm going to remind the colonel, in a subtle way, of course, about those nasty accusations he made. Excellent. Maybe you better hurry up. He might decide to go for a stroll, you know. Oh. Dear, that's right. I'll go right on up there. Well, as they uh, say in the... Yeah, yeah, just carry on. Quite. No, Dr. Kildare, I, I fear I'm doomed to spend the rest of my natural life in this unfortunate condition, so... A useless burden to my loved ones. Oh, now, let's not give up and decide that so quickly, Colonel. We had you on your feet once. We can do it again. I might say that I do not share your confidence. Now, you've got to learn to share it. I can't expect any results until you do. Don't you want to walk again? Uh, well, well, that's a preposterous question, sir. Do you believe that I would deliberately choose the life of a helpless invalid? No, Colonel, not deliberately. We Beauregards have always been men of action, sir. Why... During the war between the states, when that blackguard Grant, by a piece of low chicanery, managed to enter the city of Richmond, yes, my I family am. was the last in town to surrender, sir. Yes, well, then My that... father, who was 15 at the time, was behind the well curb firing a horse pistol. Mm -hmm. My well, grandfather I... was at the basement window firing a squirrel rifle. I see. And I'm... my grandmother was on her second floor piazza throwing down rocks. I'm a man of action, sir. Well, in that case, Colonel, fighting a simple thing like a mere case of paralysis ought to be a cinch. Well... Uh, that's different, sir. It's not something a, a man can see or get a hold of. Uh, it's something that can be fought. That is, if you want to fight it. Well, of course I want to, sir. I can't bear to think that I might be this way all my life. Oh, it's hard on you. And on your daughter as well. Emmy Lou is free to choose any course she desires, Dr. Gilder. Well, she'll never leave you in this condition. I shall insist that she live her own life, sir. Have you, uh... Met her new husband. I have not, sir. That violator of the home sneaking around to steal her away from me like a thief in the night. Oh, I see. Well, Colonel, the problem seems to be fairly clear-cut, but the treatment depends entirely on you. I can't do a thing until you decide to cooperate. That is, to fight. <laughs> There's no doubt about it, Dr. Gillespie. You were right. Some of those statements he made are pretty indicative. Yeah. It's a psychoneurotic mechanism, nothing else. Any chance he might be faking it, Jimmy? No, it's legitimate, all right. Hmm? He is right at the edge of his consciousness, though. He can almost sense the reason. That's why he's so ready to give up now and accept it. Huh. That avoids any chance of a cure. Paralysis in preference to losing his daughter. Yeah. Well, it fits the pattern. Yes, the problem's obvious enough. So is the treatment. Provide some kind of shock to wipe out this solution his mind has created for him. Change the problem in some way. Any ideas, Jimmy? No. Well, I'll read up on some case histories this evening. 
Try to find some weak spot in the colonel's fortifications. A psychiatric blockbuster, Jimmy. That's what we need. Yeah. Well, see you later. Dr. Kildare? Hmm? Oh, Emmy Lou. I've been waiting here to talk to you. Dr. Kildare, is there any hope at all for Papa? Well, that's pretty hard to tell yet. In other words, right at present, there isn't. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. What am I, I... going to do? I love Richard and I want to be with him. But I love Papa, too, and that's not all, Dr. Kildare. It's not merely a simple matter of being married that I got to worry about. It's more than that. Yes, I know. You do? How did you know? I'm a doctor, Amy Lou, remember? What am I going to do? Well, for one thing, you're going to consult me or, or some other doctor tomorrow morning. A mother has to start taking care of her child before he's born, you know. Oh, I know I should have, but everything was so mixed up. Does your father know about it? Good heavens, Dr. Kildare, I wouldn't dare tell him about this. <laughs> I guess he would really blow it. Wait a second. A shock, huh? What do you mean? Something to upset his solution. Come on, Amy Lou, let's talk to Dr. Gillespie. I think you may be our blockbuster. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie. Thank you. Good morning, Colonel Beauregard. Mammy Lou. Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Well, two doctors and a nurse, and all at the same time. Now, with the risk of appearing uncooperative, I might inform you all that I am not getting ready to die. Oh, of course you're not, Colonel, but we thought you might want someone with you at a time like this. Huh? At a time like what, sir? Why, Mammy Lou, haven't you told him yet? I was scared to, Dr. Kildare. I, I was waiting till you all got here. Waiting for what, if I may inquire? Uh, I, I guess you'd better tell him, Emmy Lou. Richard's probably downstairs in the lounge now. Yes, I... I... Well, speak up, daughter. What are you trying to say? Papa, I'm going to leave you. I'm going away with Richard, with my husband. Emmy Lou. I've talked it all over with Dr. Gillespie and Dr. Kildare, and they think I'm doing the right thing. Uh, I'm betrayed. Stabbed in the back. No, Papa, they're right. I'm awful sorry we'll never see each other again, but after all, I'm a married woman now, and my first duty is to my husband. And even more important, to my child. But to your what? To my unborn child. I'm going to be a grandfather? No, I'm going to be a mother. Well, goodbye, Papa. Here now, you come back here. I'm sorry you'll never see the baby. Emmy Lou. Goodbye, Papa. Forever. Emmy Lou. Well, stop her, somebody. Don't let her get away. I'll take it easy, Colonel. She made her choice. Well, I've got to stop her, sir. Uh, 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 the, the phone. Uh, Colonel, I had the phone disconnected. Uh, a Yankee conspiracy, sir. A foul plot. I guess there's only one chance of ever seeing her again and straightening things out. That's to catch her before she leaves the lounge downstairs. But that's out of the question now, since you can't walk. Oh, you're beaten, Colonel. Sir? Sir, a Beauregard is never beaten, sir. Why, it's no use, Colonel. You can't walk, and she's getting away. I can walk, and I will walk, sir. There. Why, you're only standing up. You'll never be able to make it to the elevator. I'll need that robe. Now, stand out of my way. I warn you, don't lay a hand on me. Great horn spoon, Jimmy, it worked. You'll get down to that lounge if he has to walk over broken glass. Down, son, and don't spare the horses. Oh, oh. Ah, Dr. Gillespie, a case like this always leaves me a little frightened about what we're working with every day. Human beings. I mean, where do you draw the line between mind and body? You don't. You don't, Jimmy. You don't. It's the same old problem still with us. Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yes. Pretty hard to imagine either one alone. <laughs> Maybe they both come together. What do you think? <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare.
Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. In the mouth. The helicopter. Certainly not. It was that southern colonel, whatever his name is, and he was walking. No. Yes. Did you hear what he said, Kildare? Yes, but, well, I know Dr. Carew has a reputation for sobriety and honesty. Dr. But I... Kildare, I have not been drinking. Carew, was the colonel by any chance riding a pogo stick? He was not. He was walking. I tell you, I saw him. Dr. Gillespie, Dr. Kildare, you better come down to the lounge right away. What's the matter, Emmy Lou? It's Papa. Paralyzed again? No, this time he only fainted. Oh. You see, he just found out something that gave him a terrible shock. What do you mean? Well, I introduced him to my husband, and you see, Richard's a northern boy. Yeah. His last name is Grant. Oof. You better bring some smelling salt. Oh, Grant. Never Ooh. mind the smelling salt, Jimmy. The only thing that'll help the colonel after that is a strong whiff of mountain mule. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Bill Conrad, and Jane Webb. Dick Joy speaking. (laughs) 